You rang. Oh, Lex, there you are. Time for recording. Yes. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on... My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5. Episode 5. Tanks for the Memories. Yeah, I got kind of spoiled in the worst way by that name, because I heard it way before I, the episode came out. Thanks to, I watch reviewers, and some reviewers say the name of the next episode at the end of the review, and I keep forgetting about hitting stop before that happens. <laughs> so my brain started going through all the implications of that name, because I was like, uh-oh, something's going to happen, and it's going to be depressing, I just know it. <laughs> I pretty much had it within 30 seconds. It took me a few seconds to go, okay, yeah, something, Tank is leaving, um, this is a children's show, we're not going to kill him, so this is going to be more like when Ash said it's better for you go. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, I, I, my brain went through all of the stuff, like, okay, just like you said, like, no, he's not going to die, because this is MLP. He's either going to leave permanently, which would, in my opinion, actually be, not that I don't like Tank, but would be the more better option to give the right kind of feels, because it has to be permanent, or the feelings don't really matter to me. Because <laughs> this is like, he's hibernating, he'll be back in like three months, and you know where he is. It's not like you'll never see him again. Apparently, Rainbow Dash has abandonment issues. Apparently. And I was like Twilight going, why is everyone crying? I'm, cry I'm crying because you're not crying. But Applejack isn't crying. She cries on the inside. Yep. <laughs> so many implications to those lines. But yeah, there is a lot of nice references in this episode and wonderful faces. I mean, there's memes of them already. <laughs> that I'm not an angry face. And the fact that Rainbow Dash makes the Grinch's grin, awesome! Yeah, that was awesome. With the phrasing of, you know, winter won't be coming, it was just very Grinch who stole Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then there's, winter is coming! <laughs> I really don't want Twilight to be Ned Stark because he dies. <laughs> After we finish this recording, I'm going to ask you why winter is such an important thing in that series. <laughs> But we're here about ponies. Technicolor ponies. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts? Well, I, the fandom is going to kill me because not only did I really not get feels from this episode, Fluttershy crying didn't move me. <laughs> I'm going to be hiding in a hole now. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's because both of us like were like looking at this episode going, yeah, um... Or, or both Twilight in the sense of, Twilight's like, yeah, why is everyone crying? Because, I mean, I think it's because she was looking at it logically, and she's like, um, he's going to be back. There's nothing really permanent about this unless you didn't do a good job of taking care of Tank during the period of time before his hibernation. Because that's the key. Mm -hmm. So there's really no reason to get that upset over it. I mean... I don't remember her having this kind of hissy fit when Applejack went to the rodeo by herself. I mean, technically, Rainbow Dash and Tank spend more time together because being a pet, she's responsible for him, so she's around him a lot, even though we don't see him much. And then there's the whole fact of, we're not quite sure how canonically this is because some of the earlier episodes weren't shown in the order they were written. So it looks like... This may not have been Tank's first winter with Rainbow Dash. Yeah, because that was bothering me during the episode. So I went and looked up the episode list in the Elements of Harmony book. And May the Best Pet Win was episode 207. And Heartswarming Eve, which was the big winter holiday, was episode 211. So if those truly are in canonical order, this is hardly Tank's first rodeo. And as someone whose stepbrother had a turtle when they were younger, it's like, um, yeah, usually when they're pets, they don't hibernate. Also, you showed bunnies in that book. Does that mean Angel Bunny hibernates every winter? And wouldn't Fluttershy have covered this whole hibernation thing when she was teaching Rainbow Dash how to take care of Tank? Yeah, but another thing popped into my head. Maybe for the first year, Rainbow Dash just visited Tank at Fluttershy's. But still, if, if she just visited, she may have run into the, like, no, he's sleeping right now. <laughs> Going to be like three months before he wakes up. Yeah, even if Tank stayed with Fluttershy instead of Rainbow Dash, that doesn't work because she still would have been visiting a lot. And if every time during the winter Tank was not available, 
I would think something would click. I actually didn't know that tortoises hibernated before this because I was like, I'm going to double check that look online. Yep, they do. There's even whole guides to how to let your tortoise hibernate. <laughs> See, and I wasn't sure how much difference there was with between tortoises and turtles because what he had was a pet turtle and what Rainbow Dash has is a pet tortoise. I think it's the fact that Rainbow Dash has Tank out with her all the time and so he's exposed to the climate more. So his body would react to how the climate changes. Also, speaking of him being outside and with Rainbow Dash, I think that flying contraption gives him the ability to walk on clouds. Because there's a lot of physical contact with him and the clouds in this episode. I'm thinking that it has to be enchanted because you also see a bit of a yellow glow underneath the stem of the propeller. And considering Twilight's specialty is magic, and we know that she knows a spell to allow ground-bound ponies to safely walk on clouds, I'm sure she could have done that. And a lot of worldling stuff actually happened in this episode. It was very subtle stuff, like the fact that Cloudsdale moves, and the fact that Rainbow Dash's house, the floors are walkable for Earth ponies. And it's not just a cloud walking spell, because Tank walks around in there without his thing on. Um, not necessarily. I go back to Twilight Sparkle spell that allows ground-bound creatures to walk on clouds. So that's an alternate explanation. I'm thinking it actually probably makes sense because, you know, Pegasus, you know, want Earth ponies to come over and uh, unicorns to come over. Maybe not all unicorns know the cloud walking spell. So it makes sense to, for them to have, like, maybe magically enhanced floors that are able for other ponies to walk on. And another thing about this episode, I don't know if it was done in the background or not, but did Rainbow Dash get punished for the fact that she kind of completely thrashed the weather making system? Not that we saw, other than, you know, the actual physical punishment that she took in the entire thing. But we still need to go backwards because we didn't cover all the references. We had the whole who's on first reference with clear sky and open sky. Which I thought was good, but I didn't laugh at it. I think it's because I've recently been exposed to the Animaniacs rendition of Who's on First, which is, uh, better. <laughs> because the pacing on that version kind of felt slightly off, and it's kind of a fast skit. Yeah, it wasn't so much funny as amusing, and, you know, also a reference to most Pegasi have some sort of weather or sky-themed name. The main exceptions being Bulk Biceps, i.e. Snowflake, and Bubbles, i.e. Derpy. Though I gotta say that that is like the funniest part of that skit, the fact that the Pegasi are playing with their names there. <laughs> like, no, Clear Skies is over there! <laughs> no, I'm right here! No, Fluffy Clouds is right over there! And that, that's a pretty strange looking Pegasus. <laughs> like, I expected Fluffy Clouds to kind of be fluffy, he just seems skinny and tall. <laughs> So it seems like Cloudsdale brings winter everywhere. So that's kind of interesting that Cloudsdale actually moves around. And that could also... Mm. Now, in Hurricane Fluttershy, we had to gather the water, but were we gathering water for Cloudsdale or for somewhere else? They were gathering it for Cloudsdale, which was, in, which was, I think, visible in the background of the episode. I think they even pointed out in that little presentation at the beginning of the episode. Right, so that makes the harvesting of water for a Cloudsdale make all the more sense if they're responsible for bringing winter everywhere. They need lots of water, not just, you know, drinking and washing water and rainwater, but enough to make snow and winter wherever they go. And we also see that this is the opposite end of winter wrap-up. Which was not previously shown. We got a brief glimpse of the running of the leaves to acknowledge that but it didn't need to be focused on because it was presented in a previous season and i want to know what's the deal with the unicorn picture in the locker and how on equestria did the factory have a lab coat that would fit tank <laughs> also aren't there any kind of like security measures at this place because <laughs> i'm like if any Pegasus can just walk in there and cause havoc. I know we're in a question and everything, but... It also reminds me, this episode goes through the five stages of grief, so... Well, yeah. Though, at what point was bargaining? Help me. Bargaining was the part where she was deciding, Okay, how do I make Tank stay with me? Oh, I know! I'll destroy the weather! That was the part where bargaining happened. I know, I had to actually watch the episode again to figure that out. Okay, to me that doesn't seem like bargaining, but... So, any more thoughts on this episode? 
Um, it wasn't the lesson that they were going for, and I'm not sure it should even be a lesson, but I liked how Rainbow Dash acknowledged the fact that she knew she was doing something wrong. She knew that what she was doing was wrong, and knowingly did it anyways. That is the setup of so many villain stories. Mr. Freeze from Batman, anyone? <laughs> he turned villain to try and save his wife. Hmm, good point there. Another thing that I liked was how Fluttershy was more firm in her kindness and actually came out and said, you know, this is happening and got Rainbow Dash to that breakdown point because she knew it was needed. It was a reflection of the lesson that she learned in season four when she got her item. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to bring up that too, the fact that we're actually getting continuity that sticks for the characters. You know, because in the last three seasons or so, Fluttershy has pretty much been fluttershy she hasn't really shown any real to me anyways growth but this season a lot of the characters are actually showing that they have learned these lessons and are showing how they use them in their lives now instead of where previously would we would have them learn a lesson and then the next time we saw them it was like it never happened and then they would actually learn the lesson again in a different episode <laughs> cough applejack cough or learn a related lesson now you said something about implications of Applejack crying on the inside? Mm, that is often phrasing that I've heard related to depression and considering the fan speculation that she is an orphan. You know, the whole conceal don't feel. Ah, thank you for that reference. That might get us killed more. <laughs> I'm already dead, so why not? <laughs> Uh, yeah. There was a lot of stuff in the episode. Like I said, I didn't really care much for, oh, we're going to be taught that lesson. I kind of, I figured that out from the title itself, the fact that we're going to, we were going to lose something in some way, but I knew it wasn't going to be through death. But overall, I liked different parts of the episode. Like I said, the references, the Grinch reference. There was just so many great faces in this episode, most of them through Rainbow Dash, of course, because she was the main focus. But it was like, wow, the animation for the facial stuff is just getting better. Oh, and what did you think of the song? I really liked it. It was nice. And like I was saying earlier, I liked that they pointed out that she knowingly acted wrongly out of love. So that's a whole thing of love versus morals. I like how the song's tempo and feel actually fit Rainbow Dash as well. It was very upbeat. It was very kind of maybe popish is the right term or more rock. But it just felt like Rainbow Dash, you know? The only part that didn't really feel like Rainbow Dash was the fact that she was singing. <laughs> she repeatedly makes fun of people just randomly bursting into song. But of course, you know, there's nobody to see her but Tank. And this episode does really show how much she cares for him. Oh, and did you notice that Tank was wearing Rainbow Dash slippers and Rainbow Dash was wearing Tank slippers? Mm-hmm. But Tank only had Rainbow Dash slippers on his front feet. His hind feet, he had different slippers. To me, they look like they were gummy slippers. Oh, so what are your final thoughts on this episode? It was a good lesson and an important one. It just didn't have the impact on me that uh, was intended. Also... We made all this fuss about being guided by the table castle map of going places and fixing things. Why aren't we going places and fixing things? Because now it's winter, so we're going to have to travel during winter, at least until we get out of the range of wherever it's supposed to be winter, and then we'll be in another season. Hmm. And I mean season as in summer, spring, fall, not season as in season of the show. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Overall, I like the episode. It took me a second watching to really enjoy it because when I first watched it, I was just so... I don't know what the feeling was. It was just like, huh, what are they going to do with this? I know they're going to do something to tank. Huh. And then, like, that's a good lesson, but it doesn't feel right if the lesson isn't associated with something permanent. So that kind of ruined the lesson for me, but, you know, for other people, it probably hits them in the feels. Me, it was just like, I'm there, like Twilight. <laughs> uh, and I liked all the references and faces and wonderful faces Rainbow Dash is making. It was a pretty good episode, especially when I can watch it again and not think about what I was thinking about the first time I watched it. <laughs> we do tend to overthink things sometimes. You know, it is a children's show. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the better ways to teach that kind of lesson. 
And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 5. Thanks for the memories. Thanks for listening. If you want to see more of my art, you can find it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you want to keep up to date with this podcast and get other tidbits, you can follow us on Tumblr as well. If you really like our podcast, please consider subscribing and or leaving comments below. Please keep them nice. If you would like some art of your own, I am currently open for commissions. All links in the description. And well, I also... You go. I'm going to growl at you. Sorry. I don't know why we're doing that so many, so many times this episode. No clue. Thank you for listening, and this has been our thoughts on, I almost said Sailor Moon, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 5, Tanks for the Memories. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 5, Tanks for the Memories. You almost got me to say Sailor Moon too. <laughs>